Just let me be great. This is Jason Jones, and you're watching the AFL Insider with Coffee Grounds. Let me be great. Arena fans, welcome to the AFL Insider. I'm your host, Jason Jones, and I'm going to be taking you around the AFL through three weeks. I've normally done a weekly blog or article on the arenafootball.com website, but this week, Coffee Grind is going to come to you via video and show you some of the things that I've seen through three weeks in the AFL. We'll start off with the power rankings. My top five teams in the AFL through three weeks. At number one, the Philadelphia Soul, they're 3-0. Their offense is playing at an unbelievable pace. Dan Rodaba is, is on record to, to be in the MVP runnings, and they definitely are a team to worry about in the Eastern Division. Number two, the San Jose Sabercats. They're also 3-0. They've had some issues when they come out east. They play tonight in Jacksonville, and definitely they're going to have to fix some of their offensive problems that they had just last week. Number three, the Arizona Rattlers, three-time defending champs. There's no doubt that they're still going to be in Arena Bowl contention. They had a tough loss against Las Vegas, but even at 2-1, and one, the Arizona Rattlers are, th- are still a team to be reckoned with. At number four, Cleveland and Orlando both come in tied for me. They're both 2-1. and one. They both have games this week that I think could go either way. So both teams could end up either 3-1 and one or 2-2. Two and two. And that definitely is a big difference when you go into your locker room come Monday. And number five, I have the Portland Thunder. They definitely are a team that I believe can make the playoffs now. I didn't have them in the playoffs to start the season, but they have definitely surprised me with the way they've been playing. Kyle Rowley has definitely picked his team up and put them on his back, and their defense is playing lights out. Welcome back to the AFL Insider. I'm your host, Jason Jones, and I'm going to go around the league with a six-pack of coffee, just giving you an insight on the six things that I've noticed through three weeks in the AFL. For number six, I started with the Portland Thunder and the Las Vegas Outlaws. Both teams are two and one and definitely a surprise for most people to be in the playoff mix in the national conference. I think both teams are playing excellent defense. Their offense is sputtered at times, but definitely has been consistent enough to make plays down the stretch. And at two and one, both of those teams should definitely be in the playoffs. I know teams like Spokane and the LA Kiss have definitely been disappointments. But the quarterback issues in Spokane and the offense as a whole issues in L.A. has put Portland and Las Vegas definitely in position to make playoff pushes. Number five, the L.A. Kiss. They've definitely been a disappointment through three weeks. I know a lot of their players. I'm really close with Deron Lewis, but I definitely need him and the offense to pick it up this week. Through three games, Teron Lewis has... 156 yards and only one touchdown. 109 of those yards came in the opening game of the season. So the last two games, he's really been shut out. And I don't attribute that to anything more than just a lack of continuity within their offense. I know McPherson is just coming back and getting his feet wet, but Coach McMillan and the whole staff of L.A. needs to get it together in a hurry because there's no way with that much talent they should be playing like this. Number four is the fans of the Arena Football League. You definitely have came out and showed your support every night at the games. Our ESPN ratings are higher than they were last year. CBS Sports is definitely doing a great job broadcasting our games every week. And we definitely have to thank you fans for coming to the arenas, for logging on and watching on the ESPN app, and definitely for checking us out on TV. We appreciate you and we love you. Number three, San Jose Sabercats. Team is 3-0 and and definitely in the race for the Arena Bowl and, and to win their division and conference and to compete with Arizona. But the injury concerns for San Jose are starting to mount up. Wide receiver Adrian Tennell and Ben Nelson are perennially great wide receivers. Both missed the game last week. Their offense sputtered. If you look up in the fourth quarter and the team only has 29 points, and that's something that's just not conducive of a Dan Arbett coach team. Uh, defensively, they're still going to bring it. Losing Virgil Gray definitely hurts. Hands down, one of the best defensive backs in this game and ever to play this game. But to replace him with the guy who is arguably the best defensive back ever to play this game, Cleavon Thomas. So I don't think they'll miss a beat on that note. But as far as the injury report, they need to stay consistent and keep guys healthy in order to make a run at the championship. For a team to be 0-3 with the talent that they have accumulated this offseason 
is definitely a shame for this league. I definitely need to see more of an effort by the team and the coaching staff to be more disciplined. You guys are worse than the league in penalties. You're giving up 13 a game and 92 yards per game in penalty yards. That cannot happen. The offsides on the motions, the false starts, pass interferences, those things have to be cleaned up. I know offensively, you guys are second in the league in yards per game and second in the league in yards per play. But definitely the penalty yardage is what is killing you guys from scoring points. Defensively, the pressure needs to pick up. I've seen some of the old Joe Sykes last week against Philly, and that's definitely going to be an addition. Getting a D lineman like Scooter Barry is definitely going to help their team. But you guys have to step it up in the red zone. You guys are giving up 15 touchdowns in the red zone. That's tied for the most in the AFL. And that is definitely something that's going to separate you guys from being a championship team to missing the playoffs completely. Welcome back to the AFL Insider. My top two, I put them together for coffee six-pack. It's going to be the Philadelphia Soul and the Cleveland Gladiators. As you well know, these are both teams that I share admiration for in my heart, having suited up and played in the last two arena bowls for each of these teams. I definitely think coming in at 3-0, the Philadelphia Soul have some pressure on them. With the three losses that they took to Cleveland last year, it's definitely going to be a revenge factor for them. But another game for the Philadelphia Soul to try to get an edge on the division championship and home field advantage in the playoffs. As far as Cleveland, being 2-1 coming off of an emotional loss last week to the Arizona Rattlers, I understand that that was a revenge game for them, but this is a revenge game for Philly. So now you go from being the hunter to the hunted. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they react being in Wells Fargo Arena. Thank you, fans, for watching the AFL Insider. I'm your host, Jason Jones. You can catch me every Friday on the arenafootball.com website at Coffee Grinds on Facebook, AFL Coffee on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you guys for watching. Capri, Funk, Master Flex, Love, Bug, Star, Ski. I'm blowing up like you thought I would.